What is going on guys and we are here doing my playoff preview prediction for the Timberwolves and Suns. Now the way I do this is I'll spend five minutes talking about the Minnesota Timberwolves, five minutes talking about the Phoenix Suns on uh, discussing why both teams could win. And then if you just want to skip to the end of the video, there's timestamps down below. It's me just giving a couple minutes explaining who I think will win and how many games and why. I still will touch on why I think the opposing team that I think might lose could still win this. That's how we do it. If you guys want to hit a like and subscribe, I don't mean the world timestamps just to skip ahead. Like, comment, subscribe. Let's go. So I was born in St. Louis Park, Minnesota. I lived in Minnesota until I was like five, almost six. Hey, this is the best Minnesota Timberwolf season of my life. Like legitimately, probably one of the most exciting series or exciting seasons of basketball in my life. And it's been awesome. Anthony Edwards is cool. I mean, Carl Anthony Towns is back. We got Rudy Gobert. We're the number one defense, ladies and gentlemen, and the 16th best offense. Our net rating is third. We're the third best three-point shooting team, too. Shout out Chris Finch, baby. Now, the way that I see us right here is this gonna this is gonna be a fought fought like like this is gonna be a fight. Okay, we're gonna have to fight. I don't know why I said fought fought, but we're one of the best teams at stopping the opponent from scoring literally in every stat except free throws teams can out rebound us teams can't you know pass the ball team we protect the paint we force them to shoot terribly on the perimeter like we got we got dogs okay we got dogs and injury wise we, the only person technically hurt is jalen clark is on the injury list but besides that the guys that are going to be playing our depth chart, what we're assuming is Mike Conley, Anthony Edwards, Jaden McDaniels, Carnthy Towns, and Rudy Gobert. Nas Reed is the sixth man coming in for either Towns or Gobert. Kyle Anderson comes in for Towns or McDaniels. Nikhil Alexander Walker comes in for Edwards or McDaniels, depending on the lineup. And then Monte Morris as our backup point guard, who, you know, has been fun. For me, I think that we got an opportunity to see a timberwolves squad that especially as the the season came to a close i know their point differential they came in 14th which is the points scored per 100 possessions minus points allowed per 100 possessions as they were to close the year the 18th best offense and the 12th best defense and they went five and four in the last two weeks i think the biggest thing right here is Carnthy towns in Rudy Gobert. We all know the story of the Utah Jazz that spacing, three-point shooting, ran Rudy Gobert off the floor. We got to see Carl Anthony Towns play two games since he's returned, and he averaged 10.5 points, 5.5 rebounds, and 5 assists, and half a block. He only made two threes on... He shot 20% from three. He shot, uh, what, 7 out of 18 from the field so he missed 18 games he's back he's going to give them size they are only playing him 28 minutes tonight i think they'll keep feeding nas reed i mean nas nas reed and i think for us when you look at our team we look at the the their ability and the size my apology i didn't mean to leave that the statistics up there we have to think, I read you guys the lineups. So now we got to think about the Phoenix Suns. How, how are you going to match up against the Suns? The Suns are a team that if you look at their, their starting lineup that they've ran, Yosem Nurkic, Rudy Gobert, Kevin Durant, Jada McDaniels, Grayson Allen. This is where it gets tough. We probably would put Grayson Allen, maybe Carl Anthony Towns on Grayson Allen on defense because he's their worst he's not bad offensively but like I, i'm i'm quite confident that carnathy towns can stick near grayson allen because devin booker and bradley beal will have to be guarded by mike conley and anthony edwards and then off the bench you know they have their eric gordon they have their royce o'neill there are things to to be worried about and i don't I don't I don't I think I think instead of looking at the bench because I don't think this is gonna be a bench battle 
I don't, I'm not scared of this being a bench battle. I think this is straight. Oh, did not mean to hit the microphone, but I think this is straight going to be their five versus our five, a battle of wits. And I, I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. It's going to be a, a, a slug fest. And I think that's just going to go to show like the type of teams that we're dealing with. Like this is going to be Anthony Edwards. Like you have a three headed dragon and Beal, Booker and Durant, and you're paying a shit ton of money versus, and that's the prototype that everybody wants, uh, you know, a guard and, you know, two guards and a wing or like a forward while the, the, the Timberwolves have the complete opposite, but they're also paying a shit ton of money to their own big three of two centers and a guard, which is not the normal. So let's go over here and talk about the Phoenix Suns. But I think the it, this is going to be some of the most interesting basketball you'll watch, similar to how the Cavs and Mavs are. This is, I mean, Cavs and Magic are. But let's talk about this Suns team. So the Phoenix Suns are they're interesting because. I mean, Bradley Beal's back, baby. Bradley Beal is back. He played 53 games this season. For some reason, it felt like in the beginning of the year, it didn't. It felt like he was going to play way less than 53. And he ended up closing April, averaging 21. In February, he was averaging 22. March, he averaged about 17, but he was also dishing out six assists a night. So that that's always exciting. And like we said, Devin Booker and Bradley Beal are going to be going against Mike Conley, Anthony Edwards, while Durant's probably going to be guarded by Jaden McDaniels and Kyle Anderson. Carl Anthony Towns will probably be put on Grayson Allen or whoever the worst offensive player. And Grayson Allen is not a bad offensive player, but you get what I'm saying. If there's four really good, I mean, Joseph Nurkic is probably going to be guarded by Rudy Gobert and Gobert is going to be doing his thing. But you get what I'm saying by that. There's no shade being thrown there. So the Suns, what is their advantage against the their their great three? You know, they they are a great shooting team. Like they're efficient. Like they are 60% true shooting. They put points up. They, you know, they do a good job of rebounding and protecting the rim. And they don't, you know, foul. They do turn the ball over a little bit. But when you look at this team. Injury wise, what are they dealing with heading into this playoff? Eric Gordon was out with an illness. We we don't know what's going on. I, I'm assuming Damian Lee's. They said they might be in the playoffs, but I'm assuming we just won't see him this year. While Devin Booker, Bradley Beal, Grayson Allen, Kevin Durant, Yosef Nurkic make up the main lineup with Eric Gordon, Royce O'Neal being two guys off the bench, and then Thad Young, Drew Eubanks, Bull Bull, depending on the game, come in. So for me, where I watch this, I think. It's it's interesting if you're a Suns fan as this is a team that Phoenix, I think their firepower, their shooting ability, this is a, they score 116 points a night. Minnesota scores 113 and they only allow 106 while Phoenix allows 113. So the way that they can win this is if they make this a shootout, if they force the the Timberwolves to play their game and just just push the pace because that's another thing if that if you're if you're not watching the Suns this year the Suns this season according to the basketball reference under Frank Vogel they are the 15th pace team in comparison the Timberwolves this year are a team that you know I believe their pace is a bit slower nothing like obviously wrong with that but yeah their pace is 97 which is 24th so you know almost 10 be ranks below them and it's not a huge difference but that's something that the Suns could do is if they can run and gun it okay and have Beal have Booker just turn this into in Durant turn this into a shootout and tell the the Timberwolves to the beat them in a shootout that this is going to become a very difficult game this has become a very difficult game for the, the Timberwolves to win. And I think that's where it becomes a bit concerning. Like, who is going to be able to stop them? And like I said earlier, this is not going to be a bench game. This is going to be the big three of each team. The big three of Rudy Gobert, Carl Anthony Towns, and Anthony Edwards versus the big three of Bradley Beal, Devin Booker, and Kevin Durant. That's how this is going to come down to. And to close out the season, Phoenix was a team that was their their point differential to close out the season 
was middle of the pack from what I recall. Uh, it's not really middle of the pack. I lied about that. They were the sixth best point differential, which we talked about earlier. Points scored by 100 possessions minus points allowed per 100 possessions. Specifically, their offense was the 13th best points scored per 100 possessions, while their defense was the second best points allowed per 100 possession. While the Timberwolves had slipped, while the Timberwolves did not have Carnathy Towns, the Suns are on a heater. The Suns are playing well. They have one of the best three-point shooters in Grayson Allen. Again, like I talked about, there's no shade throwing at Grayson Allen when we were talking about him earlier. But it makes you wonder, how is this going to go about um, who is going to go ahead and take advantage? And I think, you know, having David Roddy, Royce O'Neal, Thad Young, Bull Bull, Drew Eubanks, Naz Little is a better bench than what my T-Wolves have. It isn't as clear. The T-Wolves at least have Kyle Anderson, Nas Reed, Nas Reed, and Monty Morris, which they have a big man, they have a wing, and they have a, a, a guard. So let's talk about who's going to do, who's going to win this. This is a seven-game series, ladies and gentlemen. I think this is a seven-game series. We talked about this earlier. I said the way this is working out is it's the unorthodox big three max contracts of Edwards, Gobert, and Towns versus the traditional big three max contracts of Booker, Beal, and Durant. Well, if this will, I mean, how, how, if one of these teams were, if the Suns or the Wolves win this series and they make it to the conference finals, or if they make it to the NBA finals, I would not be surprised if this becomes the mold that teams start to build their, they try to follow suit. Because first off, you have the best defense in the league paired with, you know, an offensive maestro in Edwards with the number one ranked defense, while you have no true point guard in Phoenix with just a bunch of talent. And I mean, Phoenix is the middle of the pack, 10th offensive rating. 13th defensive rating, 9th in net rating, and the 5th best three-point. Both teams, good three-point shooting teams. Three-point shooting teams. Great three-point shooting teams. And this is why I think, I think this is going to be our seven-game series, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be our seven-game series. If I had to sit here and say, oh, one of these series is definitely going to have to be a seven-game that I, I put money on it, I would do Phoenix versus Minnesota. Because they can just keep going back and forth, back and forth. And I don't even know how it would stop. I don't know how it would stop. Now, the biggest concern with Phoenix is health and age and size. Minnesota are huge in comparison. Huge, 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 huge. To the point that I don't know if Phoenix can win the rebounding battle and if there's, you know, putbacks and all that stuff. Oof. It's going to be a tough one. But that comes back to what we were talking about earlier. They're set up to have great success. And this is this is going to be, I think, a shootout in an untraditional way. But I'm going to go with Minnesota because of the size and the defense. But I think Phoenix can win this just as much. Seriously, I think this one is not like something we've seen before. And it's going to be hard to see who's going to win it. And or who we're going to be able to stop, but I'm excited. I think it'll be fun, and we'll have a chance to see a different side of basketball that I think this is going to be one of the better playoff series in recent memory, and you better get your popcorn every night for this one. But I still think the Suns can easily take this away from the Timberwolves. So I'm like very unconfident of the Timberwolves winning this. But I do think it's going to be a seven game series. So if you guys did make it to the end of the video, let me hear your thoughts. That's it. I'm done. Those were my playoff predictions. Ciao.